a lot of what you're experiencing in terms of the languaging and the workbook and for those of you who move forward into the fellowship, a huge percentage of that comes through the gift of Jose. And, but he also, in his own right, um, is really a carrier of this wisdom and he's so fun to listen to. He's new into this space, meaning it's, he doesn't have 20 years under his belt. And you're really going to enjoy just how he articulates some of these complicated, mystical things moving forward. And um, I'm excited to hear him share this morning. He's going to give us a little bit of insight. One of the things we thought about is that sometimes we get up here and we say words like energy or you know, consciousness or whatever, and there's a, a, a decent size um, or group of people in the, in the room that maybe just are not sure what these things mean. So he's going to bring some clarity and really tee it up for Francisco to hit it hard with the science today. So without any further ado, let's welcome Jose Rodriguez to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate the elegance in which you hold space here on the stage and just so happy to be here in front of you, all of you. My name is Jose Rodriguez. I'm the director of Giving Business Soul. And it's so beautiful to be witnessing you all here together in this space, you know, I've been doing this work for about three to four years, so to really see it all coming together in this way is, is really amazing. So I have the great privilege over the next 15 minutes to introduce you all into understanding what exactly just happened in the breathwork session. By a show of hands, how many of you would like to learn a little bit more about what just happened in breathwork? Right? It's like there's all these emotions, there's this large experience happening. It's very differing for every single individual, and so what I'd like to do is go ahead and just dive in into understanding exactly what we're accomplishing here inside of breathwork, inside of flow states. So what you're looking at here is the map of consciousness. The map of consciousness was designed and created by Dr. David Hawkins. He's a real authority in the space of consciousness and spirituality. And if you've been to our events over the last few years, we come back to this map time and time again because it is such a core framework to the work that we're doing and completing here inside of consciousness. And so I'd like to go ahead and break it down for you a little bit. When it comes to the map, the cone itself has a lot of relevance, right? So at the very bottom end of the cone, you're seeing a contracted state of awareness. That's what it represents, right? When we're experiencing these emotions, when we get stuck in emotions like fear, right? Shame, pride, and anger, our individuated viewpoint is very narrow, right? You can imagine all you can see is the problem. All you can see is the struggle, right? And this keeps you in this beta wave, like you're seeing on the, on the right-hand side, right? Your, your brain waves are just really contracted. You're in this fear frequency cage, and that is literally felt and emitted in every single action, word that you say, you know, throughout your day and throughout your weeks. And so what we just did through these, this breathwork practice is that we moved ourselves into a flow state, right? And the flow state being this higher rung, right, where our awareness has now expanded, right? And there's no, now more viewpoints that we can see. Now the thing that we've been relating to this entire time, maybe we can see a different angle. We can have more compassion for ourselves, for those people around us. You know, we become 600 times more creative, right? So... In this, what essentially happened inside of this space, inside of the breathwork practice, is that you created a space between you and the external world. All these judgments, beliefs, stories that we tell ourselves, you created some space between that. And in that space, you, you were flooded with that which you already are, which are these, this, these emotions of joy, love, acceptance, willingness. And it's these terms, these emotions that you could imagine characterize flow states, right? Your willingness to face an obstacle, the acceptance of what is there so you can work with it, right? And or to completely surrender what's in front of you and be in a state of complete love and a complete understanding of what's, this is for you, this is here to teach you. So in these expanded states of consciousness, right, again, this is what we call these flow states, and you see the theta wave as well, right? You've just slowed down internally. It's a really, really powerful state. And one of the things I feel called to mention is, you know, 
we are speaking about flow in terms of productivity and enhanced creativity. And I'm sure many of you have all these emotions moving through your body. Maybe you had tears come through. And you're wondering, why did I feel that? Why did I experience that? How is that going to make me productive? Right? Well, really what it is is that the reason that you're feeling the overwhelm of the emotions is because you have not been exercising your emotions. And when you do a, a practice like this for the first time or every once in a while, those emotions come up to the surface because we haven't given, been honoring them. We haven't been processing what's there for us. And so as they come and they clear, what I can promise you is within your third, fourth, fifth breathwork session, as you stay consistent in developing practices like this, you're going to begin exercising those emotions where they no longer feel overwhelming, right? but they rather they start to be the fuel that really kind of carry you forward. And then the last thing to note, you know, when it comes to this map of consciousness, is that when you're in those higher states, it's not that you're not experiencing the fear. It's not that you're not experiencing anger or pride. It's not that these things don't come through. Rather, you see them for what they are, right? And you accept them. You embrace the struggle, and they literally act as fuel to propel you higher, right? This is, this is what the magic of flow state is about. Instead of getting caught in the anger, we can actually remain productive and utilize it to our advantage by embracing the material that's right in front of us, right? So are you going to resist, you know, are you going to resist reality, like what's in front of you, these obstacles, or are you going to embrace them and completely step into them? So that's the, the map of consciousness, and really, really important framework on page two of your workbooks. It's completely outlined. Just know that you can reference it at any time including this, uh, this next slide here. Now I have the, the privilege to talk to you a little bit about how to make flow a daily habit. And this is going to be the part of the presentation that's really, really practical. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated to get into these flow states as we learned. It's that struggle, release, flow. Right? So we need to move ourselves through processes that are, preserve our ability to move into these flow states and have daily practices that allow us to exercise this experience. And so for the sake of time, I only have 15 minutes, so I'm only going to be spending the majority of my time on these, for, these four here, these four points. Uh, but I do invite you to take a quick second and just read through all of them. And I'll give you a second to do that, just so you can acknowledge the first ones. All right. And so, cold showers, cold exposure. If you're looking for a surefire way to get into a flow state, Right now, it's November. It's freaking cold outside. It's even colder in the showers. You know, right now is the time that you can embrace kind of stepping into these cold showers. And if you say, I don't want to, that's exactly why you have to. You know, like you have to embrace the struggle to step into those things that make you uncomfortable. And I'll tell you what, like this is, this is important to kind of understand so that you can embrace these cold showers. You know, what I do when I face that cold shower every morning and I get the cortisol running through my body, I'm like, okay, I'm about to do this. I just do that Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one. It works every time to get me in, right? And, you know, when you get in, the first thing that you're going to experience is a deep breath from the cold, right? And so the invitation is to keep the breath consistent. Just like we learned through breathwork today is to exercise that breath. Breathe through it. And what's going to happen is you're, because of the cold, your body's going to shoot up cortisol, right? Cortisol is a stress hormone. So you're going to feel all this stress come on, right? But as you breathe through it, I also recommend you lean up against the wall so you don't, like, faint in case you, get, you hyperventilate a little bit. So that's what I do. And in the breathing, what happens is within a couple of minutes, that cortisol turns into norepinephrine, which is that expanding of your blood vessels, and then a warmth just goes through your entire body. So an important detail here, you can't just, like, turn the water cold, get in, and then get out after 10 seconds. Like, that's not going to cut it. You have to stay in there for typically about three minutes, and you'll know you're in the flow state when the water no longer feels cold. You know, so if you practice this on a daily basis, great. If you practice this on the, on the days where you're feeling like you have a funk or you're not feeling super focused, maybe you didn't get good sleep, get into the cold shower, it'll snap you right out of it. It feels amazing. The next one, plan tomorrow today. This is my personal favorite. I kind of speak of it in terms of my atomic habit. It's something that I learned early on in my business kind of journey and what I've been doing. And 
you know, it's all about willpower, right? Who's heard of that idea that we only have a certain amount of willpower in any given day, right? This aspect of our willpower, if we get to our desk at 9 a.m. and we're still trying to figure out what it, exactly we're going to do that day, well, that's already kind of keeping us in that struggle state. We're, wait, we're kind of depleting our energy trying to figure out what to prioritize. So planning tomorrow today is about the day before. You get your schedule and you plan 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. What exactly is going on? What are your three top priorities? Our GPS planner that we have on the merch table is directly designed to help you, su to support you in that process. And what happens is that when you wake up, instead of having to figure out exactly what you're going to be doing or what you're going to be paying attention, who you got to call, you already know. And so you get to honor your flow state and move straight into the activity without any sort of guesswork. And I think this one thing can completely change how you prioritize your day. Instead of reacting to everything that's surfacing, you're actually being very intentional as to what you're prioritizing. The next one is the deep now. The deep now is like a superpower. Uh, we kind of practiced it a little bit by getting into these, this breathwork session. But the invitation for all of you as business owners, as individuals who are achieving at a high level, is understand how to get yourself into the deep now to really exercise this level, this lever. And essentially what it works, it's very simple how it works. You just got to clear all distractions, right? Specifically your cell phone, right? Put the cell phone in the other room, put it in a drawer, right? Set a clear intention, a clear goal as to what you're going to accomplish in about two, three hour window, right? And then sit down. And what's going to happen is in the first 20 minutes of you sitting down, you're going to feel the struggle state. You're going to want to reach for your phone and you're going to realize it's nowhere to be found. And so then you're going to focus again on the work that's in front of you. And what begins to happen is after 20 minutes, you're literally going to drop into a flow state. And again, 500% more productive, 600% more uh, creative, and then problem solving just happens. Before you know it, the two hours feels like it's done in like 20, 30 minutes. It literally just flies, but you've gotten so much done. And this is something that we can all pull on. I feel like oftentimes we don't honor our space, that set healthy boundaries on how we can create this container. And I think it's just important to kind of exercise that. And I invite you also to Google how to exactly do that. There's, there's videos that you can watch to get into the deep now. And really, at the end of the day, the deep now is, again, just being fully here. Don't be stressing about what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or what happened yesterday. Be fully here right now, and that is a flow state. And then the last thing, optimize your life around great sleep. I used to kind of follow the mantra of waking up at 4 a.m. and only get five, getting five hours or six hours of sleep. And uh, it's been the, one of the best things to realize that I don't actually have to do that to be successful. Right? Getting great sleep has been a game changer. Right? When you start monitoring your REM sleep, your deep sleep, and you start to understand what your benchmarks are, like what makes you feel and perform at your absolute best, sleep is your best friend. Right? And so inside of all this flow discussion, Francisco mentioned it uh, this morning, where if you want to hit these flow states, your body has to be recovered in order to produce the neurochemicals necessary to produce the flow states. And all of that happens in your sleep. I feel like when I go to sleep, my supercomputer comes on and it just starts processing all of this information inside my dream realm. It's a really wonderful thing when you start to prioritize your sleep and really unlock what's there for you. And what I'd really like to invite in everybody's awareness, maybe you're struggling to get some good sleep, is just to really start looking at your bedroom as a temple a sacred space. Get rid of the television. Set the intention to not bring your phone into your bed. Don't do anything in your bed other than sleep and sex. You know, like that is like to, to really have that type of reverence so that when you walk into your bedroom, your body already knows I'm going to sleep. Right? If you have a television and you stay on, you know, you're watching television right before bed, your body is getting mixed signals and saying, well, what are we doing right now? Are we staying up? Are we going to sleep? Right, so by learning to create an environment, again, these healthy boundaries with your bedroom, this can really move you into making sure that you're getting those recovery states. And so the last part of my presentation here today is going to be talking about some common terms, right, some things that you want to, maybe we all have 
we've come to understand this concept of the tyranny of words, right? Where if we're not on the same page with what we're talking about, it can be really easy that we're all thinking different things. So let's get really clear on some of the words that we're going to be using today and how Giving Business Soul really sees them. So the first one is consciousness, right? A state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. More specifically, it's a reference to the amount of presence being outputted by one's soul, including the differing levels of presence. Right, so the main reference in this is to understand the way that we describe or define consciousness at Giving Business Soul. It's dependent on the presence that is being outputted by your soul. Just like on that map of consciousness, your, your awareness is expanding, your consciousness has levels and tiers from which, like levels of presence that you can be showing up in, in every, any given moment. And again, when you get caught up in the past or the future, this is what's kind of constricting your presence. This is what's constricting your consciousness. And we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into these concepts in a minute. Next thing, flow state, right? An optimal and heightened state of consciousness where we feel and perform at our absolute best. A heightened state of consciousness. When you pull the flow state lever, it's moving you into these higher states. More presence, more now, more can get done because you're not distracted. You're fully here. The next one is energy, frequency, vibration. Some people tend to be skeptical about things like this, but I feel like this definition does, a great, does it justice. The speed or rate of which something vibrates is referred to as its frequency. Quantum mechanics now recognizes that everything at the atomic level vibrates. How we vibrate at a cellular level has a direct impact on the world around us. Right, so at a quantum level, at the atomic level, we are vibrating. All right, and that vibration gives off an energy to our surroundings. And when we're in those struggle states, that lower state of the map of consciousness, we're just, everything we touch, again, is just moving with that fear frequency, with that anger frequency. So when we learn to get into these flow states and we're accessing that theta wave, the energy we start to give off is much more gentle, it's felt, people get drawn in and magnetized. You don't have to force things as much, right? And so this can be a really cool concept to contemplate. And then the last thing is the unconscious, the part of the mind and body that remains inaccessible to the conscious mind, but which affects the behavior and emotions. The journey we are all about to embark on is about bringing awareness into our unconscious beliefs and way of being in the world, right? Everything from down here, right, is the unconscious. You are 90% unconscious and 10% conscious, right? When you start to understand that you have a supercomputer here in your body that maybe you haven't been realizing is accessible to you, really all it requires is awareness of these habits so that you can begin not self-sabotaging yourself through these patterns and behaviors that you have, but also guide them towards ways to uplift yourself, empower yourself, and, and really, at the end of the day, it's about connecting deeply with the body, returning to the body. You know, we speak of this concept of embodiment. That's the work that we're doing here in fulfilling a giving business soul. We're here to embody that soul presence. For a long time, we've been kept out here, and the work now is to get back into the body.